So it's often been asked if there's a controversy with the use of zirconia for framework materials, both for dentistry as well as for implant dentistry, as well as for uh, implant componentry, such as the abutments, the part that fits into the implant and is restored usually with a crown or a fixed partial denture. The controversy really surrounds, it is a material that has been around for a while in other industries. It has been used in orthopedics um, with some both negative as well as positive outcomes. It has become a material that has rapidly become very popular in the use, if, if you look at at least just production numbers that are used in the US by dentists for uh, crowns and, and bridges on teeth as well as implants. The controversy surrounds that it's a material that is very technique sensitive in terms of how it's produced by the manufacturer. There's not one type of zirconia. There is a sensitivity in terms of lot-to-lot -lot productions in terms of the zirconia materials. And the material itself is very sensitive to post-manufacturing modifications, such as where a laboratory or a technician or a dentist um, uh, alters the material, um, trying to get it to clinically fit the situation without fully understanding the ramifications that it could have on the service life of the material. So that has been one of the aspects. Um, another controversial issue which has not been fully resolved is that there is some discussion that zirconia, which is usually a toughened material, it's toughened with usually classically 3% molar weight uh, with a material called yttria, and that's to stabilize a transformational toughening of the material. There's a controversy that that uh, process has been altered to a degree as there's been more and more moderate to high translucent materials in zirconia, monolithic zirconia that's come out. To do an increased translucency means that you have to use more of a cubic phase of that material. In doing that, that alters the physical properties that have classically been thought about in terms of the strength properties and especially the flexural strength and the long-term aging strength of these materials. And it's an open question yet as to the cubic phase's sensitivity to what is referred to as hydrolytic aging. So that is a long-winded way of saying there are some concerns, maybe some of them are still more of a research concern rather than a clinical concern, but um, as a clinician and a researcher, my concern is that I want to make sure that we are using materials that are as predictable and that we understand the long-term service life based on how the materials are currently being handled in clinical practice.